tonight we have a special bedtime story. This is a little clue, and that little pea right there is another clue. We're going to do the story of the princess and the pea, which is a delightful way to tell if you're a real princess or not. Once upon a time, many, many moons ago, of course, there was a king and a queen who had a prince for a son. He was a nice boy and not unpleasant to look at. In fact, he was handsome. He was not too handsome. He was just handsome enough. One day when the prince was old enough, his parents decided it was time for him to be married. You know what parents are like and a prince's parents are no different. The prince did not object to the idea, but he did make one condition. He wanted to marry for love. He was just that kind of a romantic boy. He told his father and his mother, I would gladly marry tomorrow, but whoever she is, she must be more mesmerizing than the moon. And I must find her more fascinating than all the stars in the sky. And there must be a certain something about her. What? Something, said the queen. Oh, just something, replied the prince. Yes, yes, agreed the king. That's all very lovely, but our condition is that she must be a princess of blue blood and equal in royalness to you. The prince wasn't all that interested in those details, but he knew he wouldn't get any peace until he agreed with his dad, and so he did. Now, you may think finding yourself a suitable princess would be easy to do if you are a handsome prince, but you would be wrong. I mean, how many mesmerizing and fascinating princesses do you imagine there are out there? Well, the king and queen did the traditional fairy tale things in order that their son might be bowled over by the right person while they threw a royal ball and they invited all the royals in the royal land. Everyone said yes. Everyone danced. Everyone had a good time, but no one captured the prince's heart. The prince explained to the king and queen how simply none of them were mesmerizing or fascinating, and not one of them had a certain something about them. No, if he could not marry for love, then he would rather live alone for all eternity just gazing up at the stars in the night sky. Not only was he romantic, he was a little dramatic. Well, the king and queen said, the thing is, our dear son, what you are really looking for is a real princess, and a real princess is a rare thing indeed. They do not grow on trees, said the king. No, 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 they do not, said the queen. You see, said the queen, king, a real princess is not only mesmerizingly beautiful and fascinatingly interesting, but most of all, she has manners, said the queen. No one should ever travel without them, said the king. Nope, never go anywhere without your manners, agreed the queen, taking her elbows off the table. Now, the only problem with real princesses, sighed the king, is that they are terribly hard to get a hold of because they don't read their mail. No, indeed, said the queen. Real princesses are very hard to come by. In fact, no one has ever found one by looking. You just have to wait. Maybe someday one will just come to you. Let's see what happens. In the kingdom of Shonan, they were all mesmerizingly clever, but exceedingly dull. And in Harvonia, there was a certain silliness about them. I mean, you can see his problem, can't you? Look at how silly she is. She had a big old tiger leopard thingy for a rug. That is just silly, silly, silly. Well, that prince came back very downcast. He refused to eat anything for supper, not even the very delicious blackbird pie the royal cook had prepared as a welcome home. He lit a candle in his window and just stood and gazed 
into the sky. Poor guy. Not so far away in a treetop house just over the mountain, there was a girl with the most beautiful black, ha black hair you have ever seen, or possibly you've never seen it. Well, she woke up that night and saw the moon dancing on her ceiling. She just popped on her favorite pea green dress and glided down the stairs and she ran into the garden. The moonlight shone in such a magical way. She wondered to herself if it could possibly look as beautiful on the other side of the garden wall. So she tripped down the garden path stepped over a pile of unopened letters, slipped through the gate where she saw that moon was perched on top of the mountain. I wonder if the moon would be as beautiful on that mountain as it is down here, she thought out loud. I wonder, don't you? Let's see what happens. Well, yes, it was. And so she continued walking right down the other side of the mountain until she came to the wild woods. Would that moon still be beautiful in the wild woods? Considered the girl. Well, it was, it really was. But just as she came out of the woods, a dark cloud moved in front of the moon and suddenly it wasn't. Oh, bother, thought the girl. She could feel a heavy storm brewing. She could never make it back to her own little tree house in time. There was nothing to do but walk on, so she walked. She had not gone more than seven steps when she felt rain falling on her cheek. Oh, bother, thought the girl. Within three minutes, she was already soaked clear to the skin and both of her shoes were filling with water. That wind was howling. The trees were creaking and cracking as if they might cart company with their roots and the rain pounded down and the lightning flashed its forked tongue in the blackened sky and the girl began to tire. It was not umbrella weather, no. An umbrella wouldn't have even done any good at all. Hmm, I think I might just catch a terrible cold unless I have the very good fortune to spot a light on in someone's window. Hmm, but what is the chance of that on a wild, wild night when I'm in the middle of nowhere, said the girl out loud. However, as usual, she made her way around the next corner and that's exactly what she saw. Look at that, look at that light in the window. She climbed steep, steep, steep steps right up to the front door. The queen woke her husband all of a sudden by a very, very loud knock at the palace door. Being a queen, she sensibly woke up her husband. He was an unusually heavy sleeper and she told him, go and see who all in the, who in all the kingdom might be banging on my door at this time of night for goodness sake. When the king opened the door, what he saw was a dripping wet girl standing. She didn't even have on a coat. She had long raven black hair and her skin was as pale as ivory and lips as red as rose petals. You know how it is with these fairy tale types. She was, despite the weather, a real beauty, but she was shivering cold and she looked as if she might collapse at any moment. Of course, the king was very polite. He had manners. That's the thing about real queens. Their manners are impeccable. He didn't even mention that a large puddle was forming on his very own expensive royal floor. Instead, he told the girl, go warm yourself by the fire while he called for his wife who didn't particularly want to get up at such an unreasonable night, but being a real queen never ever forgot to be hospitable to strangers. The queen thought this girl looked special. In fact, there was something mesmerizing, something fascinating, something, something that the queen could not quite put her finger on. 
Unlike her husband, she came straight to the point. So, my dear, who are you on such a wild and unruly night? Oh, I am a princess and I live in a tree house on the other side of the mountain. A tree house? asked the, cap the king. A princess? inquired the queen. What kind of princess? Oh, I replied the girl, I am a real princess. I was outside admiring the moon when it started to rain and then I lost my way and there was thunder and lightning, but I saw a light in your window. I do hope you can forgive me waking you at such an hour, the queen thought. Well, she sounds like a real princess and she looks like a real princess, but let's see. So after the girl had finished her elderflower cordial, the queen ordered a steaming hot bath and supplied her with the softest towels and an exquisite nightgown. Oh, this is far too good for me, said the princess, which is, of course, exactly what a real princess would say. While the girl was taking her bath, the queen had the servants make up the bed in a most unusual fashion. She chose the fabulous bedchamber with the most beautiful four-poster bed, and then right in the middle of the bed, she placed a teeny, tiny pea green pea from the royal garden, and then on the top of the pea, she piled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve feather mattresses, and on top of the twelve mattresses, she placed the finest linen sheets and the plumpest Siberian down pillows. What a beautiful bed, gasped the girl. Whoo! I am sure I will sleep like a real princess in this bed. And up the ladder she called, climbed. We will see, said the queen. But that night, the poor girl barely slept a wink. She was tossing and turning all night. Despite her exhaustion, she could not get comfortable. Worse still, the next morning she was actually black and blue and very achy. At daybreak, the queen knocked on the door with a cup of tea. How did you sleep, my dear? I trust comfortably. Not wanting to be rude, the girl replied, Oh, very well. Yes, perfectly. Thank you so much for asking. Aha, thought the queen. I knew she couldn't be a real, real princess. But what the queen was forgetting was that any real princess has such impeccable manners, it would be impossible for her to tell her host, who had gone to all the effort of making her a bed stacked with 12 feather mattresses, that in fact, it was the most uncomfortable night of her entire life. And the queen, though most disappointed, invited her young guests to have breakfast down in the royal dining room. Now, when the prince saw the princess, his eyes lit up. He thought she was more mesmerizing than the moon. And when she spoke, he found her more fascinating than the stars. And there was a certain something about her that caused him to let go of his teacup, which clattered onto the floor. The princess couldn't help thinking there was something romantic, something dramatic, something simply charming about his clumliness, and she bent down to pick up the cup. Now, a real princess will always pick up your teacup if you drop it. Kindness is practically their middle name, but this was not the only reason she did so. There was a light in the prince's dark eyes that reminded her of all the stars in the night sky. It did not escape the queen's notice that the girl bent down. She let out a cry and said a little soft, Ouch! Whatever is the matter, my dear? asked the king. Oh, dear, I'm all aches and pains today, and I just don't know why, and I feel so awful when you went to so much effort, and how ungrateful I must seem, and I hope you forgive me. But there was nothing to forgive, because as anyone will know, a girl who can turn black and blue from a teeny tiny pea must surely be a real princess. And the princess, who was not even bothered about that detail, said, 
there's a certain something about you. And the girl smiled and told her her name, told him her name. And after the moon had risen several more times, the girl, the prince asked the girl to marry him. And that's the thing about real princes. They know all the right questions to ask. And she being a bright girl, as all real princes are, knew a real prince when she saw one and she said yes. And they were married in a very real fashion outside in a garden where the sky twinkled with stars and the moon shone down and everyone had a splendid time. Peas were not served because as everyone knows, real princesses are not very fond of peas. And that's the end of my story. I hope you enjoyed it. It was one of my favorite little story tales as a child, and I'm happy to share it with you. Good night. I love you. Bye-bye.